Good morning. How do I look? My entourage is not here. I don't know where those people are. But they're not here, but we are. Hey, say this with me today. Say, the rest of my life is the best of my life. The rest of my life is the best. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that the rest of your life is the best of your life? If you keep saying it, you'll believe it. Because you can only hear something a certain number of times until you start to believe it. And if you start to say, the rest of my life is the best of my life, and you say that every day for a year or five years, guess what? The rest of your life will be the best of your life. We started saying this every day six years ago. Six years ago. You know what? Didn't take long. And we were into the best of our life. Amen. Glory to God, huh? Hey, I want to talk to you today about the fact that God is not looking for people with money. God's not looking for people with money. Did you ever think about that? Did you ever hear somebody say that? God is not looking for people with money. He doesn't need people with money. Now, we love people with money. Absolutely. It is people who have money that pay the bills. In every church, in every house, somebody has to pay the bills. And you know who that somebody is? Somebody with money. Somebody with money has to pay the bills. If you have no money, you're not paying the bills. In this country, the United States of America, over 50% of the people pay not a penny of income tax. Not one penny. They're not paying the bills. The top 5% of the wage earners in this country pay between 70 and 80% of the bills. <clears throat> Amen. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad they're there? Because if they weren't there, there'd be no food stamps. There'd be no welfare. There'd be no public school system. <clears throat> There'd be no fire department. There'd be no police department. None of that would be none of that would be in existence if it wasn't for the five percent of the people who pay the bills. Amen. Praise God for them. I love rich people. I have never been hired for a job by a poor person. Poor people don't hire nobody. <clears throat> Some politicians will tell you that uh, building the economy starts from the bottom up. That you build up. You give money to people who don't have any and that builds the economy. No, it doesn't. It doesn't build the economy at all. Because <clears throat> they don't hire nobody. They just spend it. You give money to rich people. They hire more people. Amen. Rich people hire people. Now, <clears throat> with all that in mind, God doesn't need rich people. He likes them. He loves them. He appreciates them. He makes them rich. That's why he doesn't need <clears throat> rich people. Because... <clears throat> because let me tell you something if God can work with you he can get the money to you I want to show you something I want to show you something some 
105. <clears throat> the people of Egypt, the people of Israel, the Israelites who were in Egypt, were, were slaves. Now, everybody knows slaves are not rich people. Slaves are not rich people. But God brought them out. He brought them out of there. Look at this. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. And there was not one sick person in the group. Three million people. And they come out of Egypt all rich and totally healed. They came out of Egypt the way God intended for people to live. Rich and healed. Rich means more than enough money to pay your bills. Money left over. To pay the bills in the church. To pay the pastor. To pay, to, to give people, <clears throat> to give people money. Sometimes, now I'll tell you right now, we don't give to any charities. Charities, every single charity is a money-making operation for the people who run it. We used to give to a local charity here in town until we found out the guy who ran it was stealing the money. And I said, that's the end of that. We will never give to another charity. But we give a lot of money. We give it to people. Straight from our hand to their hand. No middle person. I don't trust nobody. When I want somebody to have money, I hand them the money. I know they got it. That's how we do business. Amen. I don't depend on, on, I'm telling you, even the most wonderful charity and probably about the best one is the Salvation Army. I don't even trust those people. Somebody said to me one time, she said, she says, you don't trust anybody, do you? I said, no, no, not when it comes to money. And the reason for it is because people steal. The number one problem in churches is embezzlement. That is the number one problem across the country in churches is embezzlement. Amen. I don't trust nobody. Amen. You can't. Would you trust somebody with the money for your household? Would you trust the, somebody with the money for your business? I don't think so. You take care of your own money. You want to give money? Give it to somebody who needs it. Somebody that will help. Not somebody who isn't doing anything for themselves. Amen. Somebody who's giving all their money away to people using drugs and stuff like that. I don't give those people any money. Amen. Now, in Deuteronomy 8.18, it says that God, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he who gives thee power to get wealth. God can give Poor people, power to get wealth. He don't need rich people. All he needs is somebody he can work with. I heard somebody say one time, and I'm telling you what, this was so true. That person said, if God can get it through you, he will get it to you. You want to hear that again? If God can get it through you, some people, you can't get money through them. You get money to them, it stops. We had two people in our church. Both of them were blessed and received a million dollars. Both of them became millionaires. One of them walked into a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am deal, put a million dollars in, in him and his family's pocket and did not tithe on the money. Gave some money to an orphanage. He thought that was okay. It wasn't tithing. He's broke. Broke. God, I'm telling you what, had he tithed on that money, had he used that money for what it was intended, it was intended to buy or build a church for our church. He didn't do it. He wound up broke. When that prophecy came through that he was going to get that money, he was told that that money was to be used for a church. He didn't do it. He kept the money. He invested it in stuff. Lost it all. Lost 
everything else he had to. Amen. God couldn't get the money through him. So he won't get any money, more money to him. Another one was a woman. She says, and she didn't tithe either. And she says, Pastor Jim, I just don't feel comfortable with all that money. Fine, she ain't got it no more. The devil sent somebody to her and he got it. He took all of her money and passed it out to his family. There you go. Don't be foolish. Use wisdom. Give the Lord what belongs to him. The first 10%. I'm telling you what, you want to turn your finances around? The vow to tithe is the fastest way to do it. Say, Pastor Jim, I'm going to give God 10% of everything I make. Now, whether you're tithing here or you're tithing to someplace else that speaks the blessing over you, it doesn't matter. But tithe. Amen. When you tithe to this ministry, I speak the blessing. Wherever you're tithing, they're supposed to be speaking the blessing over you. I'm telling you, it's supposed to work that way. Look at Abraham. Melchizedek spoke the blessing over him. All the way through. God told the priest, speak the blessing, and here's how I want you to do it. Word for word. I'm telling you it works. God's not looking for people with money. He's looking for people he can work with. He will get the money to you. And I'm telling you what, he has, there's no limitation on what he can do. No limitation on what he can do. He, he, could, he could make you a billionaire before noon today. Maybe me. Huh? Do I have the faith for a billion dollars? I don't know. But I tell you what the thing I do have faith for is that God can do it. He absolutely has the ability to get me a billion dollars or a million dollars or you know, it used to be it took all my faith to believe for a hundred dollars. But now I can believe for thousands of dollars just as easy as I used to believe for a hundred dollars. Amen. Because my faith is so much stronger. I work on my faith all the time. God is not looking for people with money. Sometimes pastors are. Say, Lord, send some people in here, got some money. I don't know. I'm looking for poor people. Broke people, sick people. I get them healed and I get them blessed. They become healthy and wealthy. That's the kind of people I'm looking for. I'm looking for people I can get the blessing of God on. Their finances will go up. Amen. I go out to churches when I go out and preach in churches. I'm not, I, I, I don't draw up money out of the people in that church. I get money to the people in that church. I, I'm not looking for money from the church. I'm getting money to the church. I'm looking for, for people. I'm looking to get money to you. That's what I'm all about, is getting money to you, not out of you. So many preachers will ring people out. Not me. I am putting money into your pockets. No more empty pockets, God said. Hey, was that good today? God is not looking for people with money. Hey, when you tithe or you make offerings to this ministry, you call me. Help us send this message around the world. And I will speak the blessing over you and God will bless your finances. Glory to God, huh? Was that good today? Oh, praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Tell everybody you know about these videos, please. This is absolutely the most advanced teaching anywhere out there. I hear that all the time. Please share these videos with everybody you know. Pick two people today and tell them you got to listen to this guy because he has got the most advanced teaching out there. You know, I'm not the only one that knows this stuff, but I probably am one of the only people out here who's really teaching it on a conservative basis, on a consistent basis. Hey, make it a great day today. Remember this, God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills, and the rest of your life is the best of your life.